Hello everyone, this is Dr. Jawad. If you're new to my channel, two seconds, one favor. Or actually, two seconds, one favor. <laughs> Please hit the subscribe button down below and right next to it is the bell notification. When you hit that and I upload videos like this, you'll be first to be notified. If you're watching on Facebook, thank you very much. If you haven't done so already, please hit the like button down below and also to share this with a friend. If you want to book a consultation with me for 15 minutes for free, follow the link down below. Go to my webpage, hit book a consultation, go through my calendar. Let's chat for about 15 minutes to see if I could help you. Thanks for watching. This is Dr. Juwan. In this short video, I'm going to talk about essential nutrients that are needed for overall thyroid health and function. I deal with a lot of people online, patients. I talk a lot about overall thyroid health, and when it comes down to it, again, there's a lot of supplements needed for your thyroid for it to uh, function optimally. Okay, so this is just my roundabout list in, in no particular order. So, your thyroid. Remember, it's a butterfly-shaped gland in the nape of your neck and controls a lot of body functions. And when you're nutrient depleted, this could be the reason why you have hypothyroid symptoms. So first and foremost, vitamin D3. Vitamin D3 is a pro-hormone. It's good for overall function, brain function, immune response, hormonal function, okay? Now, when I'm dealing with patients, one of the, one of the things I want to look out for with blood work is vitamin D3 levels. Modern medical has a range between 30 to 80. I want, because of functional medicine, I want the higher the better. So I'm looking anywhere between at least minimal 50, okay? So again, vitamin D3 is needed to produce and to also use thyroid hormone. So if you're D3, de if you're D3 depleted, this is one of the reasons why you're having hypothyroid symptoms. Also too, it's a pro-hormone. It's involved with bone health, mood, blood sugar stabilization, blood stabilization, mental health, and a lot of things. Now, the dose, as I always recommend, is anywhere from 5,000 to 10,000 I use daily. I go through that range because if you're living in a sunny area and you're out there in the sun most of the time, then you're not, you, don't need a, you don't need a high dose. But I live in Chicagoland, so again, we have three seasons, again, actually three months of warm weather, so this is where a lot of times people get vitamin D3 depleted, so I want the higher the better, so 10,000 I use is usually what I recommend. Okay, selenium. Selenium, again, selenium is a precursor for glutathione. And with glutathione, again, glutathione protects the thyroid from inflammation. Glutathione helps with oxidative stress. Also, too, it's, help, it's good for the immune system, so it actually lowers the antibodies, the TPO antibodies that are attacking the thyroid gland of itself. Also, glutathione is made in the liver, and it, we deplete the production of it as we age. So taking selenium will help boost overall liver health. Selenium is good for the conversion of inactive T4 to active T3. 60% of inactive T4 gets converted to active T3 in the liver. Okay, you also do glutathione. So some foods that are loaded with selenium are Brazil nuts, mushrooms, just to name a few. But if you're gonna take a supplement of selenium, I always recommend dose about 200 micrograms a day. Next, anisotol. Now, anisotol, aka B8, but the one specifically that I recommend is myo anisotol because there's different versions of anisotol, so you want myo. Combine that with 200 micrograms of selenium, okay, and it's more powerful at reducing the thyroid antibodies that are attacking the thyroid gland. And this is good for people who have any type of autoimmune disease, but particularly Hashimoto's thyroiditis also improves thyroid function and the dose for inositol is 600 milligrams per day and again you want to combine that with selenium now i talk about this a lot in previous videos and you may also have a lot of other intake on this in reducing the cortisol levels anxiety stress i've heard some people recommend it for improved sex function that's awesome and that is ashwagandha ashwagandha is an adaptogen and it helps our body actually reduce stress and anxiety. It helps our body adapt to the stress that's being thrown upon us. It increases the function, the production of levels of T4. This is the pre, again, this is the inactive thyroid hormone, T4. It benefits the liver, it benefits the liver health, okay? It helps with the conversion of T4 to T3. 
It reduces the cortisol levels. When you're stressed out due to some way, shape, or form stress, it shuts down the thyroid because cortisol lowers the conversion of T4 to T3. Now, the one thing's for sure that you need, when you take an ashwagandha, okay, there's a lot of brands out there, make sure you have the one with black pepper because the ashwagandha with black pepper, what it does, it helps the absorption of ashwagandha into the system. So that's a key note. The dose is anywhere from three to 500 uh, milligrams, one to three times a day, depending on your stress levels. You may start off with one, and then depending on your stress levels are, you may want to increase it more and more and more, okay? The one thing that you have to be aware of, because it increases the function of the thyroid hormone, if you are on thyroid medications, you want to modify the dose, okay? Modify dose lower, because what it's going to do is going to vamp up the effects of the thyroid hormone. So keep, them, keep aware of that. Last but not least, Zinc. Zinc is phenomenal. It's essential. It is an essential mineral that our body needs for overall brain function, bone function, hormonal function, inflammatory system function. Okay, it's an antioxidant. But for the thyroid, zinc is needed for the conversion of the inactive T4 to active T3. And it's dosed again. The dose is 300 milligrams a day. Okay, so I hope this makes sense. Again, just the essential cell, uh, nutrients needed for the, in, for the function of the thyroid gland. If you find this helpful, please share with a friend. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. As you know, I do answer them. And if you want to book me for a free consultation for 15 minutes, follow the link down below. Go to my website, upper right-hand corner. There's a book a consultation and let's chat. All right. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching.